Hello, and welcome to the engineeringsupplies.co.uk tutorial on hand taps and how to use them. This video will be split into two main sections. The first section is an in-depth overview of hand taps and valuable technical information. The second section is a best practice step-by-step -step guide on how to prepare, tap, and finish a threaded hole. If you are only interested in the process of tapping, please feel free to skip ahead to the second section of the video. What is a tap used for? Taps are cutting tools used for creating internal threaded holes in materials. An internal thread is also referred to as a female thread and serves the same function as a nut. There are many types of taps available, but for the purpose of this tutorial we will be concentrating on hand taps. Hand taps can be used for repairing a hole with damaged internal threads, or for creating entirely new threads. In the case of cutting a new internal thread, a new hole, of a specified diameter, must be created first. This is commonly referred to as a pilot hole, and is made with a pilot drill, or tap drill. We will discuss pilot drills, and the drilling of pilot holes, later in this tutorial. A hand tap uses its sharp teeth to cut and remove material from the existing or newly drilled hole. As the tap rotates in the hole, the cutting teeth progressively shave the thread form into the wall diameter, and the helical spiral draws the tap deeper into the hole to cut new threads. A hand tap conventionally cuts downwards into the hole in a clockwise direction and is extracted by turning anticlockwise. These are classified as right-hand taps. Left-hand taps are not nearly as common and are generally used for machinery that rotates in a clockwise direction, like chucks, so that the securing fastener does not work itself free. Accessories used when tapping. To align in the pilot hole and help drive the hand tap in either direction, tap wrenches are used. There are different styles of tap wrench, such as bar or ratchet, but they all have the same characteristics. A clamping mechanism that grips the drive square on the end of the tap shank. And an extended handle to give the user purchase and turning force. The clamping capacity of each tap wrench type can be adjusted, meaning that each wrench can accommodate different ranges of tap size to each other. Composition of a tap. The overall length of a hand tap can generally be divided into two parts. The shank length and the thread length or cutting length. The shank is a cylindrical diameter with, as mentioned previously, a square at the end to help rotate the tap with a tap wrench or holder. The thread length is the section of the tap that contains the sharp thread cutting teeth. When the teeth shave the thread form into the wall of the hole, the material removed, also referred to as cuttings or swarf, forms into curled chips as it flows against the cutting face. These cuttings collect within long recesses down the cutting length and are referred to as flutes. Hand tap chamfer leads. Hand taps feature a ground relief at the front of the thread length. This is referred to as a chamfer. The chamfer teeth are designed to allow the tap to gradually remove more material as the tap cuts the threads of the hole. As a result, as the chamfer becomes more pronounced, the overall force needed to rotate the tap becomes less, the tap tool life increases, and the ability to align the tap squarely with the pilot hole greatly improves. Hand taps are split into three styles based on the severity of the chamfer angle. These are, taper, second, and bottoming. Before we look at this section, there is an important note on terminology we must first discuss. In the UK, bottoming taps are also referred to as plug taps, or number three taps. In North America, second taps, number two, or intermediate taps, are frequently called plug taps. To avoid confusion, for the purposes of this tutorial, we will refer to the following tap styles as taper, second, and bottoming. 
Taper taps. The term taper taps refers to taps that have a very shallow chamfer of 4 degrees per side, affecting the first 8 to 10 initial threads. The high taper angle makes them excellent for threading new holes. This is mainly due to, firstly being the easiest to align with pilot holes. And secondly, as it has more chamfered teeth taking incremental cuts, then the second or bottoming styles requires the least force to rotate the tap and cut the thread. The downside to taper taps is that they cannot thread to the bottom of a blind hole, as the threads are not fully formed. Second taps. The chamfer angle of a second tap is 8 degrees per side and affects the first 3 to 5 threads. With a steeper chamfer than the taper tap, the second tap is moderately more difficult to align with the pilot hole and requires the user to apply more rotational force to cut a new thread. However, as the chamfer lead is less pronounced than the taper tap, this tap can be used to tap blind holes where the thread is not required to go to the bottom of the hole, or for repairing existing holes, where the short chamfer is excellent for picking up the original spiral of damaged threads. Ultimately, the best and most common use of a second tap is for through holes, as the tap can create fully formed threaded holes like a taper tap, with less turns. Bottoming taps. Bottoming taps have the steepest chamfer of the three tap styles. With an angle of approximately 18 degrees per side, only one to two cutting threads have a chamfer lead. This makes it very difficult for pilot hole alignment and significantly harder to start a new thread in a freshly drilled hole. Instead, the bottoming tap better suits applications where a taper or second tap has been used to start a new thread in a blind hole, and the plug tap is used to follow, as it is the only style that will cut a full form thread, close to the bottom of the hole. This style of tap is also excellent, where an existing threaded hole, without excessive damage, needs repaired, or for the removal of corrosion and debris. The process of tapping a hole Identifying the correct tap size. To understand how a tap is sized, we must first discuss some tap terminology in relation to a cross section of its thread length. In particular, we will be discussing the major diameter, the minor diameter, the effective diameter, the pitch, and the thread lead angle. The major diameter is classified as the measurement of the diameter over the crests or peaks of the opposing tap cutting edges. The minor diameter, also known as the root, or core diameter, measures across the narrowest diameter of the opposing cutting threads. The effective diameter is the diameter of an imaginary cylinder that splits the basic triangles of a thread form exactly in half. The pitch of a thread is measured differently based on whether it is metric or imperial. For metric threads, the pitch is measured in millimeters, as the distance between the peak of a full thread cutting tooth and its adjacent counterpart. Comparatively, an imperial pitch is determined by how many threads the tap would have within an inch length. The thread lead angle helps determine the thread form. The most common thread forms are UN for North America and metric for the rest of the world. Both of these have a 60 degree thread lead angle. The third main thread form is Whitworth with a 55 degree thread lead angle. All tap forms differ from each other in respect of a combination of their outside diameter, pitch, and thread lead angle. This means they are not interchangeable and using the wrong tap will damage the hole by removing too much material. For this reason, we need to know how to measure a thread accurately. When measuring a thread, it is sequenced as follows, the major diameter, followed by the pitch, 
followed by the thread form. For example, a 6mm major diameter, with a pitch size of 1mm, would be classed as an M6 by 1. Selecting the correct tap to extend, repair, or clean an existing hole can be a difficult task if you don't know the thread size. If you have the original male fastener, this is made easier as you can use a micrometer or vernier caliper to accurately measure the major diameter. With the original mating male fastener, if the threads are not too damaged, you can identify the pitch size using thread pitch gauges. Pitch gauges are a small set of blades with varying pitch teeth cut into their profile and are stamped with their corresponding pitch size. When correctly matched, all the teeth of the thread pitch gauge fully interlock with the thread of the fastener and light should be barely visible between the two. In the event of not having pitch gauges, you can use the same process by using the thread of a tap or fastener that you know the pitch of to check against the original mating male part. Again, if they completely interlock with barely any light visible, you should have a pitch size that matches the original thread form. Comparatively, accurately sizing an internal thread, especially small diameters, without having a mating male part to measure, is extremely difficult. There are two main reasons for this. Firstly, pitch gauge blades will struggle to fit in the bore and are almost impossible to read to see if the teeth fully engage with the thread. The second problem is that with internal threads, you cannot use a vernier to measure the major diameter because the internal thread will not measure beyond the minor diameter. Pilot or tapping drill sizes. The size of the drill used to create the pilot hole is determined by the material being machined and the combination of the major diameter and the thread pitch of the tap that will ultimately be used. To find out the specific pilot drill size, it is common to refer to tapping drill charts or tables in machinist handbooks. Using our engineeringsupplies.co.uk site, you can find the specific pilot drill hole size for the tap you plan to use in the table within the description. Here is a special fact that most people are unaware of. With metric threads, you don't need a chart to identify a pilot drill size. All you need to do is to take the pitch size of the metric tap and minus it from the diameter. For example, M6 by 1 mm pitch would be 6 mm minus 1, giving a tap drill size of 5 mm. Likewise, M14 by 1.25 pitch would be 14 mm minus 1.25 mm, giving a pilot drill size of 12.75 mm. Pilot drill sizes are slightly less than the minor diameter of the tap. This means that the cutting teeth of the tap always create fully formed threads. If the pilot hole was too large, the drill might cut or truncate the peaks off the internal thread form. This would result in weakening the overall thread strength of the threaded hole. Alternatively, if the pilot hole is too small a diameter, this would make the tap both harder to align and rotate, and in extreme cases, cause the tap to bind and break in the hole. On occasions where a difficult material is being pilot drilled, for example, a high tensile material like stainless steel, the force required to rotate the tap is far greater. In these circumstances, it is generally safe to drill a pilot hole 0.2 of a millimeter larger than the recommended pilot drill size without truncating the internal thread. This will also help reduce friction between the tap and workpiece meaning that the tap is less likely to snap in the pilot hole when cutting. Tap types. There are two main tap types, carbon steel and high-speed steel. Carbon steel taps, 
cost much less than high-speed steel, due to the materials they are made of, and the manufacturing process. Generally, the ingredients used in a carbon tap, make them only suitable for repairing or cleaning a thread, as they are not very strong, and wear quickly. However, the carbon taps featured on our engineering supplies.co.uk site, are manufactured in the United Kingdom, made from premium materials, and should also allow you, to create new threaded holes, in most materials, including stainless. Carbon taps, are manufactured using a process called, roll forming. Tap blanks, contained in a loaded hopper, are fed between two special rollers. As the rollers turn, they press both the thread form, and the spiral, onto the plain thread length section of the blank. The tap, then has flutes machined into the diameter, by a milling cutter. Comparatively, high-speed steel taps are comprised of ingredients, such as, high-carbon tool steel, chromium, vanadium, tungsten, and iron. This makes a high-speed steel tap, more resistant to heat buildup, stronger, meaning it is less likely to snap, and having better tool life, due to its wear-resistant properties. The flutes are initially ground on high-speed steel taps, followed by the threads. This is done with a diamond dressing wheel. The accuracy of grinding the flutes and thread on a tap, is more time-consuming, and expensive, than the thread roll forming process, of carbon tap manufacturing. However, the advantages are, that a high-speed steel tap has a more accurate tolerance, and the cutting teeth are extremely sharp, making cutting a thread easier, especially with difficult materials. The grinding of high-speed steel taps, is also extremely refined. If cutting soft materials, with a new carbon tap, such as aluminium, or nylon, the tap must firstly be run through a piece of steel. The reason for this, is that burrs may remain, on the cutting edge face of a carbon tap, as a result of the flute milling process. Without initially running the tap through a piece of steel, removing these burrs, a new carbon tap, may cut oversize, when cutting soft materials. This is not necessary with high-speed steel taps, as a result of their ground finish. The process of tapping a hole. Pilot drilling. When creating a new thread, once you have picked the correct size of tap to be used, and have selected the corresponding sized pilot drill, using a tapping drill chart, machinist handbook, or from our site, the first process is to drill the pilot hole. We cannot emphasize enough at this point, how important it is to use the following steps for drilling. If drilling high tensile materials, use a cobalt drill. Initially drill a small hole, preferably with a center drill, or center punch the workpiece, to ensure the pilot drill does not wander. Use the correct lubricant for the workpiece material. Keep the drill square with the workpiece, to ensure a nice perpendicular hole for tapping. Do not put too much pressure on the drill, this can cause the drill to heat the workpiece, and work hard on it, or cause the drill to bend or snap. And finally, don't run the drill too fast. Often people run drills far too fast. This can cause excessive drill wear, and work hardening of the material being machined, making it harder to tap. Lubricants. This is one of the most understated subjects when drilling or tapping, and should be one of your first considerations. The purpose of a lubricant is to, help assist the drill or tap to turn with minimum resistance. Reduce heat buildup in the tool and workpiece. Improve the surface finish. Increase the tool life of the cutting tool. Help flush cuttings down the flutes, away from the cutting edges. And most importantly, help prevent tool breakage when cutting. The materials you plan to drill or tap can vary wildly in characteristics. The four main materials you will encounter are steels, stainless steels, aluminium, and plastics, including nylon-type materials. As a rule, it is better to drill or tap with the addition of a lubricant. 
These are available in three forms of viscosity, or runniness, which are, pastes, liquids, and aerosols. Steel is the most accommodating material when being tapped, and most cutting lubricants will be acceptable. Stainless steel is one of the most challenging materials. The high tensile properties of stainless mean that when being drilled, tapped, or reamed, the friction generated to cut the material results in a massive amount of heat. This heat means that a conventional cutting lubricant designed only for steel will not work on stainless steels as the fluid will burn up before providing any lubricity. Instead, a lubricant must be used with high EP additives, meaning extreme pressure. You can tell if you are using the correct lubricant for stainless, if it smells badly. This is due to the sulfur content that prevents the fluid from evaporating with the cutting heat. We recommend the use of our Silcut 1000, as it is excellent for cutting all materials, with the exception of aluminium and other similarly soft materials. Soft materials like aluminium, copper, and brass, prefer as light a cutting fluid as possible, such as paraffin, templex, or at worst WD-40. A conventional cutting fluid is too thick, and doesn't allow the cuttings to escape. This means the cuttings build up in the flutes, and can jam against the cutting face, resulting in increased friction and the possibility of the tap snapping. Other soft materials such as plastics do not require any lubricant and are best cut dry. Install the tap into the tap wrench or chuck. This is straightforward. Open out the jaws in your tap wrench and tighten on the drive square of the tap, ensuring it is gripped firmly. A tap loosely held could cause the tap to fall out, hole misalignment, or the tap wrench stripping the tap drive square. Align the tap with the hole. Firstly, add a small amount of lubricant into the pilot hole and onto the tap cutting teeth. You now need to make sure the tap is in line with the hole, so that as the tap rotates, each cutting edge removes equal amounts of material from the hole wall. If the tap is out of alignment there is a high possibility of the tap snapping. The likelihood of this happening increases, the further a misaligned tap is driven into a hole. So, it is imperative to ensure the tap's alignment with the pilot hole, not necessarily the surface, and view from various angles and positions, that the tap seems as straight as possible. If tapping on a manual lathe, you can help ensure the tap is centralized, by positioning a center, into the hole on the back of medium to large size taps. Threading the hole. When tapping a new hole, initially put a small amount of downward pressure on the tap as you turn the tap wrench clockwise, approximately three full rotations. This is in order for the teeth of the cutting edges to bite into the material. On the third full turn, you should feel the tension gradually increase on the tap wrench. At this point, check the tap is still perfectly aligned with the pilot hole. If it isn't, back the tap out, reposition, and start threading the hole again. If the tap is aligned, continue tapping. However, from this point, always turn the tap half a turn clockwise, then quarter of a turn anticlockwise. As you turn the tap counterclockwise, the flanks of the tap break swarf that potentially could form into large curls within the flutes, into smaller, manageable cuttings, and keep the cutting teeth clear of debris. You should find that the force needed to rotate the tap wrench does not increase from here on out. The more you get accustomed to tapping, the more you will develop a feel for how the tap is cutting the material through the tap wrench. This tells you whether you need to back the tap out a bit more to clear cuttings or whether you can afford to take more of a clockwise turn. This next point is important. If the tap becomes very difficult to turn, stop immediately. Forcing a tap that does not want to turn will almost certainly result in snapping the tap. 
there are a few main reasons why a tap might not turn. The tap has reached the bottom of a hole and can go no further. The tap is not correctly aligned with the hole, as discussed earlier. The pilot hole is too small for the tap size. Cuttings are not clearing the flutes, and are jamming the cutting teeth. Or, the tap is not sharp enough to cut the workpiece, either through wear, or incorrect tap selection for the material being cut. In this event, stop what you are doing, back the tap fully out, and investigate the problem. It's much easier to do this, than it is to extract a broken tap, though we have solutions to this too. Repairing a damaged internal thread, is slightly different. You have to use a degree of feel, as mentioned earlier, through the tap wrench. You are not trying to cut lots of material, so resistance should be relatively low. Instead, you are trying to use light pressure and rotation, to attempt to catch the existing damaged threads, and have the tap follow the original hole spiral. Hole finishing. Once you have successfully tapped the hole, extract the tap, and clean the hole of cuttings and debris. Compressed air, a vacuum cleaner, or flushing with a spray of light oil is perfect for this. In the case of using a light oil, this will also offer a degree of corrosion resistance in some materials. We hope you've found this engineeringsupplies.co.uk tutorial helpful and informative. Please remember to like, subscribe, and let us know in the comments section any other tutorial videos you would like us to make.